Hello friends, welcome to UPRTOU online studies. Today in the chapter of research methodology, we are going to take an important topic that is data collection. It is being considered in both MCOM 112 and MBA 2.6. Now, for any research, data is very important. As you all know that the backbone of any research depends upon this data. How you are going to collect that data and what is the use of that data in your research? Because data are the facts, figures and the other relevant materials past and present serving as basis for the study and analysis. Means it is a base. It is a past and present on which you are going to analyze all the statistical tools are working on the data. What type of data you are collecting and according to your needs you are going to apply the statistical tools. Now the types of data. Data of many types. Data pertaining to human beings means all the data which we are going to collect for the welfare of the human beings or related with the human beings means individual who are helpful for our study, individuals who are helpful for our research. Data relating to organization. As you all know that all the organizations are composed of people. So here we are collecting the data from the people but in the form of an organization because what the people are filling or giving the data it is of the organization but who is giving the data it is an individual who is giving the data so here it is an individual it is a human being which we are collecting the data when we are going to do behavioral study we are collecting the data of an individual but when we are going to do organizational study we are going to collect the data from the organization then the third form is data pertaining to territorial areas Territorial area means the area in which your study is being confined. Whether your study is confined to Uttar Pradesh only, then you are going to collect the data from Uttar Pradesh. When your study is being confined to whole India, you are going to collect the data from the India. If you are going to collect the data from Prayagraj, Varanasi, Balia, this type of area, this type of cities, automatically your data is being confined to that specific area. So here the data is being taken on or contained from the three things that is human beings or individual, organization and territorial areas in which they are working. Now personal data, as I have told you that individual who are involved in the research, we are going to take the data from that individual. For example, if we are going to conduct a study on the customer satisfaction of the banking system. So we are going to take the data from an individual customer who are being served by a specific bank. So here a customer of a specific bank is going to be our respondent. So here demographic and social economic characteristics of an individual is very important like name, gender, race, social class, relation, education, occupation and incomes. These all things, these all parameters we are going to consider for the study, for the personal data. What name he is going to write, gender, what is the income class, what is the social class relation, what is his education level and according to that we are going to compare or analyze the data. Then behavior variables, that is also very important because individual and his behavior is very important when we analyze the data. Here attitudes, opinions, knowledge, practices and intentions are very important. As you all know attitudes and opinion is different because attitude of an individual towards certain things, towards certain condition is different. But opinion can be very much different. So here all the things of a behavioral segment is being considered over here. Now data types. As in the previous slide I have told you that data is of personal type, it's of organizational type and of territorial area. So when we are going to do with the data of personal data, we are relating to human beings. I have told you that it is of both demographic and of behavior. Then for organizational data consists of data relating to organization, origin ownership, function, performance means 
that what type of his organization is it how the organization is working who is the owner of the organization why this organization is being set up what is the mission vision objective and the role of that organization and whether that organization is fulfilling the specific objective vision or mission or not so whenever we are going to conduct a research on an organization these parameter must be considered by a researcher then territorial data territorial data are related to ge geophysical characteristics population infrastructure etc of division like villages cities taluks districts states and etc means here we are going to confine our study on the basis of geographical location if we are going to say that we are going to conduct a study on indian bank that are working in the premises of or the periphery of prayagraj we are going to take we are going to take the data from indian bank who are in the geographical area of prayagraj only same way if we are going to take the infrastructure means the infrastructure in the area which the infrastructure is laid out and we are going to confine our study on that specific mode now importance of data why these data are being used as you all know data are the prime are the backbone for any research first one is for decision making for the application of any statistical tool for going to a specific decisions getting the best alternative selecting the different alternatives and getting the best for this decision making importance of data is very important the best decision can be taken if we have got the best data then for problem solving as you all know for any study for any research you must have certain problems and this problem is known as the research gap for which you are going to study so to overcome that research gap you have to apply certain statistical tools and this is statistical tools are highly dependent upon the data which you have collected if you have collected a authentic data a reliable data your study is going to be very transparent and fruitful to the whole society for great understanding now data also gives understanding to a researcher and all the stakeholders who are directly or indirectly related with that research now your understanding means that you must know that if you have got this hypothesis if you have framed certain objectives why you have framed such certain objectives and why that objectives how that objectives are being overcome so for this you are going to collect a data and according to that data you are going to interpret it and conclude that this is what the ultimate findings of our research is for improving process now process is what whenever you are going to do any study whether it is an individual organizational or territorial process is very important because everyone wants to have optimum utilization of its resources so for optimum utilization of resources it is very important that a continuous improvement on any process should be there now how can you improve the process we can improve the process by good research we can see that how a layout can be when you study production management you are going to have a plant outlay so there is a continuous research which work over there and the best outlay is this that minimum effort and maximum output then for understanding the behavior it is also very important because the behavior of a person is very important for the development of any organization as organization is always been composed by an individual the reflection of an organization depends upon the leadership if a organization is being led by a very efficient and behavioral sound leader the reputation of the organization in the society is very good you can take an example of tatas so here for understanding the behavior it is very important that data is being collected in a refined manner 
than sources of the data. How you are going to collect the data? There are two different sources mainly used in our research methodology. One is the primary data and the secondary data. Primary data is the raw data, means a data which is being collected by an individual, by a researcher for his or her study and is being applied first time, means raw, for his study, it is known as the primary data. Primary sources are original sources from which the research directly collects data that have not been previously collected, means it is the first time source, it is an original source. Then secondary data, the secondary source consists of a readily compared all and already compiled statistical statements and reports whose data may be used by researchers for their studies. But the secondary study, the secondary data are the published data. These data are very important for the study which is being based on the government sector. Why? Because it is a published data. Here the researcher knows that how you are going to conduct that study. This data is being published. It is being published in any magazine, newspaper, government gadgets, so books. So you are going to, the researchers is going to take the data from that published format. Now, advantages of the primary data. The first advantage of primary data is, it is an original source of data. Means here, the researcher himself is collecting the data and he is, he or she is collecting his, her own data. So it is an original source. It is possible to capture the changes occurring in the course of time. When you yourself is conducting a study and collecting your own data, anytime there is a minute difference or minute change in your research work, you can accordingly change in your collection of data process. It is flexible to the advantage of the researcher. When you take primary data, it is very advantageous for the researcher. Why? Because it is a flexible. Here a researcher knows that how you are going to collect the data and if there was any doubt or deviation in the collection of data, accordingly researcher used to do proper changes. Researcher knows its accuracy. Now, when you are collecting a primary data, as individual researcher himself is collecting the data, so he knows that what is the accuracy. Why? Because he knows that who are the respondent who are filling the data. If the data is being collected by a reliable source, its credibility is good, automatically your data is very good for the study. Data collected as per the objective of the research means here the data in the primary study, when we collect the primary data, the data is being collected as per the objective of the study. Why? Because for collection of the primary data, we are going to take the data by the help of questionnaire or schedule. So when you are going to prepare a questionnaire for a primary data, automatically the questions are confined to the objectives which you have framed for the study. It is most authentic since the information is not filtered or tampered. As the researcher himself is doing his research, therefore primary data is the most, most authentic form of data and it is highly used in all the primary research. Best for extensive research study. Whenever you are going to do an extensive study, we have seen an epidemic, COVID, in which we required an extensive research, therefore primary data is important. So primary data is very useful for extensive research study. Now what are the disadvantages of primary data? Primary data is expensive to obtain as the researcher himself is is going to collect the data. He has to frame a questionnaire. He has to do scheduling. So for this, he has to go to the sites, transportation cost, publication cost, collection cost, TA, DA, different types of costs are going to be incurring by the researcher. So the first disadvantage is 
primary data is very expensive to collect. Then second one is it is a time consuming process because whenever you are going to collect a primary data, it takes time. If you have framed a questionnaire of 20 questions, 25 odd questions, you are going to give that to the respondent and the respondent are going to fill according to their time. So when their time matches with your time, you are going to get the data. So it is a time taking process. It requires extensive research personnel who are skilled. Means here for the primary data, you must require an extensive skilled person who are there for conducting the research. They know how to collect the data. They must be competent about the study. It is difficult to administer. Means for primary data, it is very difficult to administer that how you are going to collect the data, from where you are going to collect the data, at what time the data is going to come. So administration process is very important over here and it is very difficult for any researcher to administrate all the process of the data. Then chances of biasness are great extent. Means here whenever you are going to collect the data by an individual organization or territorial data, the chances of biasness is very important because an individual who is collecting the data is very important. If he or she is adopting a bias attitude, automatically the whole process will be affected and your study will be not up to the mark on which the study is being conducted. Then it may have narrow coverage, means whenever you are going to collect the data, primary data, the coverage, the data collection, the sample size is very important. It might be that the person from you, from whom you are collecting the data has a very small area. For example, you are taking the data from the Indian bank and you are collecting the data from the specific area. You are going to specific area and collecting the data apart from covering the whole area of the Prayagraj. Then methods of collecting primary data. How you are going to collect the primary data is a big question for any researcher because as a researcher it is very difficult to know that how you are going to collect the primary data. The first one is the personal interview. It is a time taking process. But here a respondent goes to an officer, to an authority by which he is going to collect the data. And he used to frame certain questions. And according to that questions, he is used to going to ask and conduct a personal interview. And according to that interview, he or she is going to collect the data. Second one is observation method. Observation method means a respondent used to sit over there and observe all the process which is going over there. So with a time span of certain duration, he used to see that these things are processing, these things are happening in any organization. So according to that observation, he is going to get the data. And this data is very useful for his or her study. Then data collected through mail. Email is a very important and soft medium nowadays for collection of a data. We frame a questionnaire and we send that questionnaire through email and we say that we expect that certain at a certain time of frame of time we are going to collect that data by the respondent. Then web method. Web method is also an important method. Here we frame a questionnaire and we throw it on a website certain things and according to that you are going to collect the data. If you have bought certain things from Flipkart, Amazon, different sites, you see that after buying, after completing of a certain process, a feedback form comes over here that whether you are satisfied with the delivery system or not, how is the delivery boy, how is his behavior, everything. And you say, yes, 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 good, 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 good. So all this process, this is known as the web method. And last one is telephone method. Nowadays, telephone is of no use. Mobile is being used. So here, mobile is also being used. We used to send the questionnaire by the help of WhatsApp and different modes and collect that question, questions and data by that process. Then second resource of data. As I have told you that primary source is the raw source, while second resource is the published source. It is also very important because in some of the study, it is very difficult to collect the primary source. If you are going to conduct a historical study, empirical study, so here respondent has to go with the past data. And it is not suitable for any respondent to go to the past and collect the data. So for this secondary data is very helpful. So for secondary data, the sources contain data which has been collected and compiled from another purpose. 
here government of india or any other organization has collected the data and published it for the welfare of the society so here researcher used to see that whenever he is going to conduct a review of literature he will find there are certain studies being done in that area and he used to collect the data from that specific thing a lot of being data collected for the covid study now different medicines have been developed so these are the past data at what time at that time what has happened so on the basis of that you are going to collect the back data so secondary data is some time it is very much beneficial for any of the organization and research then advantages of secondary data secondary data if available can be secured quickly and cheaply as i have told you primary data is very expensive because you have to collect it by your own but for secondary data it is very cheap it is being in the published form you can go to a website take a pdf and you will get the data second wider geographical area and longer reference period may be covered without much cost here when you are going through a secondary data you know that the secondary data for example government gadget every year it is coming out the nep nep is based on the past data and on that we have made a new policy so here the geographical area is very wide for secondary data then the use of secondary data broadens the database for which scientific generalization can be made here the researcher has got a very broad base that how you are going to conduct the data how you are going to conduct the study it is a very wider base which he is getting because when government used to collect the data the government is going to collect the data on the basis of the whole territory as a whole government conducts census so census means that each and every indian is going to give a response environmental and cultural settings are required for the study here environmental and culture is very important for any data so for secondary data culture and environmental factors also considered for the study the use of secondary data in other researchers to verify the findings based on primary data for some studies primary data must be backed by secondary data so here whenever you have got a findings on secondary data or primary data you are going to see that whether our primary data findings matches with the findings of the secondary data or not if findings of both the data are same you will say that your study is reliable and conducive to the whole society disadvantages of the secondary data now what are the disadvantages of the secondary data the first one is the time gap for example if today you are going to use the data you are sitting in the year 2023 and you are taking a data of 1995 or 2020 if you are going to take a data of 2020 there is a three year gap it might be that the conditions have been changed it might be that different environmental factor has been changed so the data of 2020 may not be used in 2023 or is bias in the present scenario data may be too broad based that is not specific enough to adequately address the form this is question when the data of secondary data is being taken it is a broad based activity it is not specific enough the data may be too broad based that is not specific enough to adequately address the firm research question what the firm wants and what the data is saying there is a gap so there secondary study this gap is also being witnessed the units in which the data are presented may not be meaningful if you are taking a study of different countries and you are applying in india if you are conducting a financial study for which the money unit is dollar and for our country it is in rupee so it might be that the unit is going to be difference and the output may not be good the sources of the data may not provide sufficient supporting material to allow the researchers to judge the quality of the research means here the sources of the data are different and may not provide a sufficient method for collection of the data 
then the data sources may lack reliability and credibility how the data is being collected whether data is being collected by reliable source the credibility of the data is very important so for a secondary data a researcher doesn't know that whether this data is reliable or not then some second data may simply be inaccurate we don't know that how the data has been taken and how it is being published so there are chances of inaccuracy of data is very much in secondary data the most important limitation is available data may not meet our specific need so for secondary data the data which we are using for the study may not be up to the standard of the data which is in its world for the study as a whole so it is very important that whenever we are going to take the help of secondary data we have to take into consideration all these points that whether that data which we are considering for our study matches with the objectives of our present study or not now methods of collecting of secondary data published data as i have told you the secondary data is any form of secondary data will be published but sometimes it is unpublished also for example the data has been collected by the government of the country but it is not been published properly but you can go to the organization and collect the data from the resource person over there so here also you are collecting the secondary data because it has been collected by another organization or another company and you are collecting that data for your study therefore it is secondary data now <clears throat> for collection of data it is very important there are two methods that is schedule and questionnaire so it is very important to know that what are the difference between the schedule and the questionnaire the first one is the questionnaire is generally sent to mail to informants the schedule is generally filled by the research worker so here what you should do is that that whenever you frame a questionnaire that questionnaire is being sent to the respondent to the informants and you are going to get back the response but for the schedule you or individual researcher has to sit over there and take all the data by its own so it is a time taking process to collect data through questionnaire is relatively cheap means whenever you are going to collect a data from a questionnaire it is relatively cheap because you have to frame you have framed a questionnaire simply questionnaire of 10 20 25 questions you have framed questionnaire of open ended questions and closed ended questions you have made and you have mailed it you have sent to the respondent you have floated it into the mail but when you take the schedule to collect data through schedule is little more expensive because here a researcher has to go to each and every individual and collect the data by its own so it is a time taking process and it is a costly affair too then response is low in case of questionnaire whereas in schedule response is very high here what happened is this that whenever we are going to collect the data by a questionnaire the response rate is very low why because we have sent the mail but the respondent has not seen the mail or he has seen the mail but at that time he is not in a condition to reply sometimes the mail comes into junk so there are different problems which a respondent has to face so he is not in a condition to reply but in schedule what happened over here is this that an individual a researcher himself used to go and collect the information and whatever information he is collecting is authentic reliable and credible then in questionnaire there is no personal conduct but in a schedule there is a face to face contact whenever we are sending a questionnaire there is no personal contact if i am sending a questionnaire to you a mail is going to be sent over there that dr gorov sankar was doing a research on analytical study of human resource management in the indian software company and that mail will be delivered to each and every person who is directly or indirectly related with the it companies they don't know who is dr gorov sankar but they are going to reply so there is no face to face contact in questionnaire but in schedule if i am going to conduct the data if i am going to collect the data by the help of schedule i have to go to each and every individual who are working in it companies and collect the data so each and every person each and every individual knows that who is dr gorov sankar then the questionnaire method is used only when respondents are literate 
So for the great drawback of question is this, that if you have got an illiterate respondents, then question is meaningless. So here, you must have a community of literate people for getting the data through questionnaire. But in case of schedule, this is not the case. You can use the schedule to the person, to a locality where literacy is not there because you yourself is collecting the data on the part of the respondent. Right? So questionnaire, in framing a questionnaire, one should know that the simple, the most questions should be of simple form. We have to take, if you have framed four or five objectives, so your questionnaire must be maximum of 20 questions because for each objective, you can have only maximum five questions. So five objectives, five fives are 25 questions. And these questions must be both open-ended and closed-ended. While for schedule, you also have to frame a specific parameters on which you are going to conduct your study. So, as you have seen that in the research methodology, in the chapter of data collection, it is very important that data collection should be proper, reliable, authentic for the transparent study. As the data is the crux of all the research, it is a backbone of all the research. So it is very important for any researcher that the data reliability, what type of data he is collecting and how he is interpreting the data. Most of the data, most of the study which is being confined for primary data on primary data is known best in the area of research methodology. Sometimes primary data backed by secondary data is also being considered best for any study. I hope this lecture is very useful for all the learners of QPRTOU and research methodology. Thank you.